I'm going to start this by saying that you have, everybody should have, I think I've made enough for everybody. I didn't bring the, the middle school ones I used this summer because they were, you know, because I fed the middle schoolers while they were here, so I've got little orange fingerprints all over them and stuff like that. If you want to uh, work with someone, please do. This is very much a collaborative experience. Uh, we are going to assign Mr. Nicely. He is in charge of doing the AR piece. So I'll show you the AR piece, but I'm not going to go into great detail because... Okay, do I need this? Right. Did everybody put the app on their phones? Yes, you do. Yeah. Okay. Not yes for your part, yes. Okay. Well, you got the app on your phones. That way we can do this. You don't need it right now. All the app is for, let me get my toys on here. We have, uh, I loaned out a lot of my goggles to somebody and I haven't gotten them back. These are nice. So to do the VR piece, you're essentially going to put your phone inside of one of these things and then you put this thing on your head. And then you have to be careful because, um, because you'll be in a virtual little world. And as you turn, move, etc., you actually move around inside of this world that you are going to create here in just a minute. The, the part that I say you have to be careful is you can literally walk into the wall. This, you're in this environment where it shows up, you know, the horizon is way over there, and you start walking and you bang into the wall. The middle school kids thought that was hilarious. But so these devices essentially, who's got a phone? You see your phone? These devices are nice because even if you got a big old phone like Savannah's here, they're all foamy and you can get them down in there. Okay? And then you're, you'll have the CoSpaces app loaded on your, on your phone. You'll see what your, actually you'll see everybody's creations and you can bring them up and you can do it. Now, Scott, did I give you the cube, Scotty? No. All right. Scott's going to be using this thing called a mega cube. <clears throat> These things are like a buck from Walmart. And what you do with it, what Scott's going to do with it, is he's going to create something in AR. He'll hold his phone up to this, and then what he's created shows up through his phone on this thing. Now, you'll quickly figure out, like the middle school kids did, that I don't have to have this thing. Right. I can point it at the table, I can point it at the wall, whatever I want to. The point of doing it on here was you're trying to get the kids to visualize. I have this finite space called the screen. Mm -hmm. And you can put anything and everything on it. And what's cool about it is you can just rotate it around as you're looking at it. And it shows you whatever you put on it. We also figured out how to put fireworks coming off of it, which is, uh, again, kind of cool. You're holding your hand and you see pew, pew, and it's coming out. So, that's for you to play with. Cool. That, that's phone. You can throw it across the room. And you wouldn't hurt a thing. Ow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> typical, typical middle school. We, we all had to take the, the cues. Every kid that came to this camp this summer got one of these. I had a ton of them. And the first thing they wanted to do was to throw them around and see if they could see it still if it was flying through the air. That's pretty cool if you think about it. In other words, if I threw my phone cube, but I had my phone up so I could track it, will I still see it? And it did. It's kind of crazy. So CoSpaces. The first thing you need to know about CoSpaces is this is an app that was developed as a way of having kids do VR, AR. It is an extremely heavy resource app, meaning if you're sitting on a network and your network is being, you know, flaky or the latency is, is bad, this doesn't work too well. Just give you a heads up. Once you get the product made, it works really well on your phone. I don't have an answer for why it does, but it does. We will be looking at two different ways. The virtual reality is what it sounds like. We're going to build a world. Now, in the assignment, it says something about what? You doing a demonstration content, blah, 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 blah. You know, let's just have fun. Let's just build a world. When I did it with my uh, kids this summer, they were to create a world 50 years in the future with a emphasis on climate change. In other words, how do you think climate change will affect what will the world look like? If you don't think it's going to bother the world, fine. 
you know, just create a pretty scene and have animals and things walking around uh, that I can then walk around. Some kids went dark. I'll show you how to do that. Some kids went real dark. And so their worlds 50 years from now had zombies in it and vampires and all this kind of stuff. Typical middle school. It's typical middle school. And I'll show you where all this lives. If you want to go dark, you can. Um, other kids did, and I'm, I'll show you one of them. Uh, they did a demo where they, uh, they just had water. And then the buildings were in the water, and they showed whales and sharks and things swimming around the water. Okay. Then when you get it done for the assignment bit, you'll do the share. It gives you the link. To dunk, to dunk, to deep. So when I click on your link, because I have ownership of co-spaces, it takes me right into your little world that you've created. Your little world will live in here for a while. Uh, I have 30 seats. So I have two classes. The lady who was visiting with us from Mead County that showed us her Google Classroom, she's going to use it with her science kids. And then Morris across the street here at Manual, he wants to use it with his math kids. So I got to be real careful about letting everybody play like crazy. If you find it interesting and you want to use it at a school, just let me know. And I'll let you have control of it. You can create the class, put the kids in. The nice thing about it is, is I can create a class and I can call it, I can give her the code and she can go in and then. You can come in behind her, and you two will work on the same piece of uh, thing. So really, you got two people working on one, so it doesn't count you. Yeah, that makes sense. So I got 30 seats, so I really have 60 seats. Or if you get real chummy, I could have 90 seats. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with showing you how this works because everything you need to know is right there in that hand. Okay. Unlike our scratch, this is. What's nice about this versus Scratch, Scratch is such a huge world. This is a fairly small world. This handout encompasses everything you need to know. It has a weird um, URL. It's cospaces.io. Does anybody know what IO is? Indonesia. Go figure. Okay, so here we are. I asked you to join the class, and I'll show you that code if you haven't done this yet. So if you have already joined the class, you can log in by putting in, see, let's see, here's the students. So here's who I have. So there's our course. These are the people I have. So I've got Ashley, I got Scott, I got Michael, I got Peyton, I got Savannah, I got Savannah. So Julie, I need you to get in here. There's your class code. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. So you're going in and you're just going to sign up and you've got a code. Ta da! I see you. So that's what I'm, that's thank you. Because what you're showing is, this thing is running in real time. So like if you all do want to work together on one thing together, it will update. So if like Ashley and Savannah back there are working on it together, as Ashley adds stuff and Savannah adds stuff, it'll update on the screen unless the network's running slow. That's the only caveat I have with it. Otherwise, we're going to go up here and we're going to create. Oh, no. Sorry. My bad. You are, you are going to go over here and you're going to start one. And once you start one, you should get the gallery. If you don't, go up there and just click on the little squares. So I wanted you to see what stuff can look like. Uh, we are not going to be at the level tonight of building like VR adventure games, which is kind of cool. Uh, if you want to try for it, you go for it. 
but I just wanted you to see what's possible. And if you want to like click on one of these just to see anything that says cube, stay away from because that's the you can see the little cube up there in the upper right hand corner. That's where somebody has created content that's just for the cube. OK, so poke around in there for a little bit and look at stuff just so you can see. Yeah, you can put music in it. Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Okay, let me take you through and show you some pieces and then I'll turn you loose. So I'm in here and this thing's called Steve and I'll show you how mine, I was just messing around with it so I can show you some of the elements. So as you can see, I'm in a background of water, okay? And the elements I have in here is I have a sneaky shark that is swimming out here. I have an orca who's playing and then the whole point of this is, you see, we have these buildings. This one's collapsing and sinking into the water. And then this one's still a little bit above the water. The whole point is something happened and these four buildings are stranded. If I click on play up here, then whatever I've coded in for this thing to do will start happening. As you can see, the orca, he's kind of going to start moving around. Over here, it's kind of hard to see because he's hiding. There's a shark that's swimming toward us. <clears throat> okay. If I scroll, I can zoom in. If I just hold down the mouse or either arrow keys, mouse, it doesn't matter. I can move around and see this world. Now, this becomes really important when you start designing things because you want to be able to tilt things so you can see how things all fit together. Because at this level, you're right in, it's all right in front of you. Okay? Now, you could imagine if you had on a pair of goggles and you went to this CoSpaces site and you went and chose this one, what would it look like? Everything I just did with the mouse, you would do with the goggles on. So if you turned your head, you could walk, and if you walked into this, you could be walking toward the building, toward this over here. Uh, Mr. Shark, I forget where he's sneaking up to right now, but he's in here somewhere. And there's the whale. He's still playing. The shark is not on a path. He is literally in infinite time swimming around in this thing. The orca, he is on a path, and that means that he has a very specific area that he walks in. The shark is probably out of shot by now because he basically has taken off. So one of the things you'd want to do is if you wanted to do sharks in your water, you would put in multiples and you just duplicate them, just duplicate, 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 and move them around. All right, so that's what it looks like. And that's about 15, 20 minutes of work. So let's go and start with a... So I'm going to go back to where the gallery was and I'm going to click right up here where the little hamburger patties are and I'm going to come over here and create a co-space. Now, this is for Scott. Scotty, you're going to be working in here primarily. Okay. okay. The rest of us are going to jump into here where it says ARVR co-space. You can go ahead and jump into yours too, Scott, because everything we're going to do kind of fits what you're going to do. When I click 
click on it. I can't see that. I can't see that. I had to get a free play to create one. You had to do what? I had to go to free play for it to bring up create coaster. Okay. Which was up here. You can do it in the assignment as well. Yipper. Yep. Yep. You want to have a 3D environment when you finally get here because we don't have 360 images. Okay. Do we all get there? Let me go home. Let's go classes. Steve Swan, module seven. Julia is here. Mike's here. Ashley's here. Everybody's here. And Scotty, you're doing Mega Cube. You see, yeah. it knows Scott's doing Mega Cube. It's got the little thing up there. When I click on it, it doesn't let me do anything. Really? Yeah. You don't get that? You get it? It still has a play button though. And that's okay. okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You're up here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're cool. You're cool. All right. What I want you to do is first thing we need to do is once I get in here, you're going to go down and you're going to look at your choices down here in the lower left. Do you see what I'm talking about? Okay. And what I want you to think about is where is this thing you're going to create where does it live because that's the first thing you have to think about okay so you're down here you've got a thing called library you got a thing called upload holy crap you're so what he's saying here is you could upload your own stuff to turn into a virtual world when the kids figured that out it was you know Katie bar the door because they were putting all kinds of Star Wars and uh, Star Wars and The Walking Dead seemed to be the hits that, that summer. Okay, so I'm going to go to Environment. Now, when I told you kids can make their thing dark, that's exactly what I meant. See here where it says Mood. So if you want to have yours a bright, sunny environment, yay. If you want it to be a moonlit or nighttime environment, you click on the little moony. It just does that. Cloudy is it's not as bright as it would be if it were sunny. And you can lighten things up. In other words, if you pick sunny but you want it to be a little bit lighter, you can click on the mood thing. Now, edit. There's your choices. So now you get to pick what kind of environment you want to have. So if you were going to, if you wanted to be indoors in a spooky place, you could pick that. There's a cityscape, moonscape, city during the daytime. Uh, I guess that's country. Snow, snow, again, plains, water. And nothing. This is just pretty much a nothing. And I guess that's a desert. So I'm going to go with the plane. And when I do that, remember, I can change it to where it's sunny, nighttime, cloudy, whatever you want to do. Okay. We good? All right. This comes under the heading of getting your stuff together before you start coding. And let me show you what I mean. If you click on library, there's all the different things that you can have. So you've got characters. 
and I just wanted to show you how many different kinds of characters there are. It's full of characters. You can have vampires and witches, <coughs> pirate captains, angels, however you want to go at it. If you want to go out and do a Google search and find a walking zombie person, you can put it in there and it works. Okay, so you get the idea. If I go the animal route, I'm just going to go and put a grab a dog and put him in my shot. Okay. And there's my doggy. Housing. This is where you can find interiors or you can find buildings. So if I wanted to go put my dog outside of a house, let's see if I can find one. Oh, no, here we go. No, 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 no. Here's what we're going to put. We're going to put a hydrant. Okay, so I have a dog and I have a hydrant. Okay. That's how you put stuff in. Show you something real fast. See the little ghost picture of a camera? That's how it is going to establish your opening shot. Got me? So, in other words, when I go into your virtual world, where that camera is, is what I'm going to see first. So if I wanted to bring my camera over to where my dog and my little fire hydrant is, I move it around, and that way I can determine where my opening scene is going to be. Okay? This blows kids' minds. I'm looking this way, but where else can I look? That way, that way, that way, that way, that way, and that way. All this does is it establishes your opening position. That's all it does. So if you wanted to have a big monster there, you know, you could and scare it by death. Under the heading of, this is the kind of stuff you want to do ahead of time before you start coding, is if you click on things, right click on your dog or your animal or whatever you put in you see a whole new world kind of pops up this is how if you create something that you want to have a lot of so in other words if i wanted to have a whole pack of dogs running around here all i have to do is go in work with my dog but then i can come right back here and duplicate it very similar to how you would duplicate the sprites in scratch Except it's, to me, it's a lot easier to understand. The thing that you really want to do is up there where it says code. Make sure you click on that. Make sure you turn on use in code blocks. Everything else you can leave alone. Now, if I added another dog into here, it will automatically go dog one, dog two, dog three, dog four. Okay? It automatically numbers them. When you get really into this thing, if you want to go nutty, you can turn on the physics machine, which does some really cool stuff. Okay? You can do precise collisions. In other words, you can really get it down to where you want him to hit something else. Animations we're going to do in just a minute. Okay? Because that's really fun. For right now, we've turned on code. We now know that the, the thing that we've created is called dog. If you're going to have more than one, you might want to number it. I can transform it in these ways. I can change its position, rotation, and scale. Well, that's really hard for kids to get into their heads. But I'll show you in a second here how you can change all that right on the screen in front of you. Lock is obvious. Somebody can't delete it. Um, mask is if you want to make a mask of it so you can do all kinds of crazy things. I'm going to unmask it. All right. Now, 
if you click on one of your objects, so like I did my dog, you get a box with four different things up here. Can you see it? The one in the upper left is how I can rotate and change my dog in terms of where he is within the environment. That makes sense? So if I wanted the dog to have a different way, he's looking at the fire hydrant. So I click on the first one and I can rotate the dog around. Notice it is X, Y, and Z axis, isn't it? Here's your X, Y, there's your Z. So I can tilt him, I can do this, I can do that, or I can flip him around however I want to do it. I could then turn him on his side if I wanted to. So if I wanted to have a dead dog laying there. Okay. This one says, I'm sorry, let me go around the horn here. Translation mode is how you can have the dog interface with things around him. See how I'm sliding him around and he's getting bigger? And he's also in front of the fire hydrant. Okay? This is a biggie. This is your scale. So I'm going around the horn here. I'm on the bottom right. When I drag this up and down, backwards and forwards, it increases the size and scale of my dog. Now, scale could mean two things, right? So scale could mean that he's closer to the camera or he's bigger. If I want to lift my dog, I click and hold and I can go up and down, up and down. Okay. That comes in handy when you have things to put them in behind or whatever. So now I'm going to move him a little bit. I'm going to bring the fire hydrant over a little bit. And there we go. Okay. Now you're ready to play. All you're doing here is, is you're building your environment. And I know it sounds kind of bass backwards. Let me right click on this fire hydrant. Make sure you turn on code, code with code block. If you want to change the name, this is where you can do it. Otherwise, pretty much done. Also, you want to get rid of an object because you don't want to use it anymore. You threw it, doesn't work. You just come up down here and delete it. You with me? All right, let's go play with code. Code is pretty similar to Scratch, but a hell of a lot easier. That's the best way I can describe it. So I'm going to click on code. And I'm going to use co-blocks. Notice you could go all the way in and use script. It gives you that option. You're not going to do that because this isn't a class in, um, you know, doing that kind of thing. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to use my co-blocks, which I just got rid of. How did you do that, Steve? Do the code blocks look familiar to you? Okay, so it's very similar to what you've done before. Notice though, it does a nice job here. Of, it actually puts the play block in there right away. You don't have to go hunt it down. Now you have to decide what you want to do. So at this point, if you're making just a active environment that we're going to walk around in, so all you're doing is you're then going to bring in your characters into this active environment. If what you want to do is have some structures or whatever, trees, bushes, etc., you just bring them in and you dot the landscape with it, and then you can have your actors, your characters, walking around inside of that. Let's go down through the various ways you can mess with things. And these are all in your little handout there. So the first one is transform. And what's so nice about it is it will pick up on whatever you've selected. So notice I had selected my dog. So when I go into here, it says move dog. So if I drag that over and click it underneath here, this should be stuff you're like, oh yeah, I remember us doing that in our other thing. Okay. You then have these different parameters that you can play with. How many meters do I want to move him? And I'm not sure if I remember if there's a way to change it to feet and inches. I think it is stuck in meters. 
and then it's going to go forward, backward, left, right, up or down. How long is it going to last? Okay, so I'm wanting to go one meter forward in one second. Okay. We did all that last week, so that shouldn't be too crazy for you. But this is where it gets fun. So I can move my dog forward or back, whatever, move whatever you're playing with. And I can go down to actions and I can set animation of the character that I've selected, which is dog. And I can then decide what I want that animation to be. And there you are. So I've got him moving and now I can animate him. Look what he lets me do. He lets me chase his tail, bark, eat, lie down, play, run, sit, sleep, walk. Now, this is nice because you don't have to dig into the code too far. The code's already saying, well, here you go. You can pick whatever you want to do with this. So I'm going to have my dog chase tail. Mm -hmm. What's missing that you remember from last week when we played? Forever. The what? Forever. You're right. Very good. Where is forever, by the way? It's in here. Yeah, it's under control. <laughs> yep, good for you. So now it's the same trick, isn't it? I'm going to take my forever little blocky thing and I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to take my pieces and I'm going to slide them into it and then I'm going to click it up here where the, you don't mind, I'm going to blow my thing up so we can see it. So I can either bring my forever in underneath where it plays and then I can go set the animation block in there. And I can do the move doggy block in there. Right? Just like Scratchy. But Scratchy doesn't give you the fun of having the animation there for you. Now, stop and think for a second. What we've done, we've set our animation the dog to chase his tail. So is he going to move forward down here? So is he still going to move forward while he's chasing his tail? Yeah, some of these I don't have. Like the set animation of and the forever, I don't have that. What part don't you have? The forever part. Oh, I have Did I don't you go know. down to control? Yep. Yeah, all Maybe I have is repeat. Um, all I have is repeat and then wait for one second. Yeah, ours is going to upgrade to pro. Yeah. You're in pro. Yeah. You put in the cost code. Yeah. Because if you're in my code, if you're in my class, in my code, then it you are in pro. Let me come back and look. One of the habits you want to get into is playing. So I did a little bit of code. Now I'm going to play it. Let's see if we can see what he's doing. Now, I've got to go find him because I moved everybody and I didn't move the camera with me. So there he is. Okay. So he's moving very slowly forward. And I can zoom in. Now, if, if I had my goggles on and I was doing this, I'd be walking toward him. Which is what I was saying, yet be careful because, you know, people walk into walls and aren't, you know. Okay. And then you want to just tell it to go back with a little arrow. Now you're back where you were. Last thing, then I'll come back and check on you all. If you go down here to the library and you do specials. One of the things that you can do is you can add a path. When you add the path, then you can define where you want your character to go. So if you have uh, your character that is going to be just wandering around inside of this world that you're creating, you do that with a path. 
let me throw that in and I'll come back. Oh, also, I'm going to fix my camera. I'm going to bring my camera back here and have him on the dog. Then I'm going to put in a round path. And everything we've already done works with the path, except it has these little nubbins that you can grab onto and drag out to define your path. So I'm going to have my dog walk around a lot here. I also find that it's helpful that if I tilt my world, I can see things better. So I'm going to go and click on my path and I'm going to have a, have a nubbin go out that way. In other words, I'm really going to have my dog go quite a lot of wandering around here. Okay. I'm going to go back into my code. And now what I'm looking for is that I want my dog. Oh, by the way, can you see that he can say hi and all that kind of stuff too? Oh, I'm having a I'm having a brain fart. I forgot how to get him onto the path. I know he's on here. There it is. So it's under transform, move dog on path, round path. See, so it already understands it. Now, if I have more than one of these paths, I have to name them, just like I have to name the different characters I might have. So I'm going to move my dog on path. And I'll put it in here in the forever block. So now he's just going to keep going round and round on this path, chasing his tail. And I'll go back to here and I'll play it. And let's see if he does. There he is. See? And he's out of my shot. There, I need to back up. Here we go. So he is literally running around the camera, chasing his tail. All right, now I'm going to let you play while I go back here and look over Savannah and Ashley show and see what's going on. Where'd you figure out? We were in the log. Yeah, we just created. We just created. Now you're good? Now you ready? No, I mean, it won't let me do anything. Let me see what the time does. So what you're going to be doing, Scott, is if you think about your cube sitting there, you're basically putting different elements on each one of the planes of the cube. That's how that works. So I've got to go home, create a co-space, and I clicked on this one, right? Okay. And then this came up. Is yeah, that right? I don't get any of the editing. Can you do this to it, though? If I press play, it, I can do that. Okay, I don't want you to press play. Right. But that's the only option I have. Okay, we're going to make our own creations for the merge cube. No, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I shouldn't do that. I should be right where I want to be. Bless you. All right, let's go back. So, do you see this library stuff down here? No. Nope. Really? Okay, we'll come up here and sit. You're on your Mac? Yeah. It might well, be it. It might be the Mac and the Flash aren't very so happy. So, when I click on it, that's all I get. Yeah. Okay. Let's try this. 
here. And let's see. Here I can. Can I? Can I? Oh, thank you. Let's see the pull that's way now. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't see it from where I was. <laughs> it's actually the opposite. Okay, let's create a co space. Now, if I create outside of the classroom. Yeah. Because I was in, in the classroom. Yeah. What if you went and deleted my. Since you're the teacher for the classroom, can you delete mine that's on yours and I could start fresh? Mm hmm. Let me try. Okay. All right, so let's go home. So this is yours, right? Uh, no. Is, no. Mine, is, mine says module seven. Oh, yeah, because I'm not in co spaces, I'm in your class. Mm -hmm. And I don't even see you. So when I when you all joined, I guess you joined as yeah. We went through in classes. As, if you clicked on, and then if you went to module seven. So that one's mine. All right, for Scott. Okay, so you want me to kill it? If you can. Well, yeah. Look, see, it says copy to my co spaces. Okay. So let me see what happens if I do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bam. Okay. <coughs> Let me give you an idea how it works. So, like, if I wanted to put, I can put stuff on the queue, mm -hmm. and then I can do everything we were just doing, right? And I can bring it over and attach it to the cube itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You move it. Do we got it now? No, it, yeah, when I click on it, it still just says, doesn't. Weird. And if I click start over, it doesn't do anything either. No, it's, I mean, it's working here. I don't have an answer. Except you can sit here and play. If I reset my co-space, let's see. Now there's there is something I'm missing here. There it is. There's the merge cube. Okay, so I got the merge cube. I don't. Very frustrating. Right, because if I'm logged in as you there. No, you're logged in as wait. Yeah, yeah you log in here as me. Yeah. I mean, it's. We could just let you go in here. What if I. Let me do this. I may log out. Because mm -hmm. I'm not a. It has, it has me not as a pro either. Because it has to upgrade to pro. But let me log out. Um, I signed in with Google. Let me sign in. Let me create an account using a different mm -hmm. and see if I can join the class and start another one. If that doesn't work, then I'll just do it here. If that's okay. So, let me show you. Okay. Here. so what you're doing here is you're going to do the same stuff we just did. Mm -hmm. right? So you bring your stuff out here and kind of place it around the cube. Then when you're ready to put things, you just go place and then you go find the item mm -hmm. that'll be floating around out here. And then you have to tell it, boy, when I'm doing this, I have to have the full screen. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go, I want to put it on what side? Right. right? Yeah. And then, so you're building the little pieces uh -huh. then that connect to the cube. And Makes you're creating sense? just like a little mini world. Yep. On yeah. Yeah. They're actually floating shot. on the yeah. cube. Okay. You can, you can make these. Oh, here, let me show you the other things you do. It's pretty slick. Because you, you can do. make them kind of be individual you can set the cube inside you can make it visible okay. so if we drag that up here and then if we play it what we should see you see right so it wiped out right so you can actually see the cube. okay turn it around etc okay uh -huh. 
All right. Yeah, I'm going to try that. Exactly. So what you've got to do is you've got to put another block in that turns it sideways again and bring in or put the path in. No, I did the path. So no. yeah, all right, let's do a path. No, I'm saying they're easy. How do you get so the over here is special? So you can drag this in. I don't know if John put it in this way. Hard to see it. So you're going to drag the path in. Now, what you do is you're going to do the little nubbies in there. You can drag those around and then you have to find how the deer is going to walk. That's why they don't use some zoos. So you could be walking the off the same time. Or you might want to grab that one. No, you don't want that. You want to run from the other.
Okay, have you have you played with the app yet? Yeah, so I don't really know how I'm going to do that. I mean, it's okay. kind of hard to put the story involved. You know, like I do so, it. So I mean, yeah, I'll be honest with you, I couldn't do it on that funny little laptop. Um, see, I have two apps. I see. Does so that mean you'll just go down the back console? Uh -huh. So the skier I have going down the hill. Right. So, so the skier thing. going down the hill, what you could do with that one is, if you don't want him on a path, you could just go down the hill. Right. And then turn. Oh, okay. The nice thing I like about this over Scratch is it's large, right? The movements and everything are very clear what you can do. Miss Julia, what do you think? I can do in space. Can we try this? Sure. Have you have you saved all that to the gallery? Um, yeah. It does it automatically. Then, so in other words, if you yeah. go back to the gallery, do you see? Did you name it? Go back to the gallery. No, I didn't. I don't know how to name it. All right, let me show you. Scotty, you gotten into Cube at all? I did for like 30 seconds, but some of my stuff was locked, so I backed out of it to okay. find out what's going on, and then I'm back at the same spot. I see it. Okay, you're there. See it? Mm -hmm. And if I play it, oh, that is awesome, girl. Now, what this is going to blow my mind when I go in and do this with this. Yeah, because I'm going to be surrounded by all this stuff that you've created. What else is around me here? So you have nothing on those sides. Now, I'm going to challenge you to go back in and do what I'm doing, right? Just moving it around and add more stuff. Because then when I put the goggles on, it will freak me the hell out because I'll see all your stuff flying around. So you go back in the gallery and just click on your creation. That's it. Thank you. you. Just spin your world around and add more stuff. I'm going to go ahead and get it uploaded on my thing. You have to make multiple ones. Like everything will move at the same time. Um, mm. oh, I'm not forgetting you, buddy. No, I got I figured it out. You did? Yeah. Excellent. I just switched my camera. Did you deliberately go the dark route, Julia, or were you just playing around? No, I didn't have that option. Oh, really? I couldn't figure out. That's just how it came up. I couldn't change the environment.
The tricky bit is as you're putting it into the thing, you're turning on the play. I'm also taking the, all the nice plastic off. So I'm looking at an orca, right? She's swimming around. <laughs> it waited too long. <laughs> yeah, we had that happen this summer. Oh, crap. I know what I did wrong. Let me show you. I'm going to redo it. Okay, so what I forgot to do is here I am, right? I started to play, but I forgot to touch that. Stand up. Let me hold on to you. Let's walk a little bit. Run a light into a window. <laughs> this is cool. So as you're walking, is it? Are you moving through? Uh huh. Let's walk this way a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna bow the door. Out the door. <laughs> Yeah, she said people. Why don't you say? <laughs> Coming in like a spider monkey. <clears throat>
Go up to on your laptop up at the top, it'll say share. And you get that code, and that's all you gotta do. Okay. You're done. What value do you see in this? Imagination. I in terms of kids understanding spatial. <coughs> I mean, when I did it this summer, they I had, didn't have any trouble. But I had a different kind of kid. I had the cream of the cream of the crop, but a kid who struggles in middle school. Does that make sense? On every everything that they've taken tests, everything they're they're top, but in school they just can't function. They just for whatever reason. Like I had a kid who literally had to hold his, they all had Chromebooks, they didn't have these. But he literally had to hold it in his hands and walk around the room in the program. Most amazing I've ever seen. And every once in a while he'd set it down because he was focused on doing something, but then he would just pick it right back up and he'd wander around some more. But his stuff was amazing. You see where it is, Julia? Uh huh. It's easy once you get it built. Yeah. Are you ready to try yours, Savannah? Savannah's is very holiday. Hold on, I got to add some things. Do you have to, uh, that looks like that. Yeah. And that'll allow you to click on them, click the code, and it'll allow you to change. Why do you have that huge? Because I wanted to add the flower and holding it. So everybody's in that wall. Hey, how do I get uh, whatever to the left? You get what? That's a path. Next Monday, y'all have a wonderful Thanksgiving, by the way. Seriously. I love Thanksgiving more than any other holiday. My family. It's, it's family. I hate all the gift giving and all the crap on Christmas. This, this is my holiday. Um, when we come back on Monday, we'll take a look at the final. You can sit in here and do the final. I looked it up. It's December the 10th. And it's all done? Yeah. Okay. But remember what I told you? The dirty little secret? Right. Two days after that, so really it's a fuck. So if you're struggling and you need the extra time, you know. oh, we're going to work on it in class next week. Mm -hmm. okay. Unless you look at it, Scott, and go, piece of cake, you want to get up and walk out. I mean, I doubt that will happen. Go with the schedule. Right. Sure. All right, so get your phone. You got the app on your phone? So the thing that Julia and I discovered was you go into the app, you find your thing, you just tap on it. Uh, okay. Okay. in the classes, or is that it right there? Sticky right. Just, just use that as one of the things. And then what we're waiting for is for them to load it in, and then you tap on yours. Oh, yeah. Okay. Pull 
That's it. That's you, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 Cool beans. You doing okay there, big guy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've only got one thing moving, but I've got a lot of things in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See you tomorrow. Perfect. For the exam. Mm -hmm. What exam are you all doing? Geometric investigations. investigations. It's not fun. No. No. Right. It's they might break Huh? Who's teaching? Uh, I don't know what it's called. What? It's like four thirty five. Site. Oh no. Yeah. He's easy. Love site. Good on Cool beans. Mm -hmm. See you guys. Bye. Peace out, Girl Scout. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. You too, dear. Happy Hanukkah. Good work, Julie. That's my Hanukkah next semester. What a 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 what Come into our math class and just snap. Uh, he, wants to, to going. he wants the thing that was Julie Jim Jackson. <laughs> Classes. Swan. Assignments of module 7. Oh, yeah, mine just turned in. The chip jumped in to let us see the different. Do we need to turn this in into a Google Classroom as well? So, you remember how it works, right? If I put the link into an announcement in Google Classroom, and then I put a little, hi, Steve, here's my thing, and I post it, what does it do? It sends it to me. So yeah, I already posted on Blackboard. And you put it, you, you're double covered. Okay. What world did you make? I'm just curious what dark recesses of your mind you wandered into. Oh, man. Like, uh, it's like Trouble Guy. <laughs> really? Yeah. So you did sort of like a country background kind of look? Yeah, and then I just threw a bunch of stuff on there. Well, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. One thing is moving is a sneaky snake. How do you turn it in? Let's share something with the class. Okay, so let's go back to home. Here's the bar, right? Can I get another free playlist? That's why I can't see it. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're gonna click on that. All mom fifteen percent guys. This is bad. This is bad scout. Bad news bears.
we have a so that's where you are is in free play yeah. okay let me see if I can find free play on the app because it's here I mean I just saw it so let's see yeah, I found it on the app. What do you do? You go into free play? And so the classes, you go down to free play. And, then and it shows up? Yeah. Okay, let me try. Okay, where do you see free play? Do I have to get out of Swan? Where do I go? So instead of classes, I hit free play. Instead of classes, you hit free play. I don't see free play though. I hit archive. Maybe we'll be there. Archive? I hit, well, I put it in archive. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just going to be on mine. No, it should work. Let's see here. I have a license plan. I mean, it's showing me all the stuff. Maybe free play is where kids can do stuff <laughs> by themselves. Exactly. Which, was it just called Module 7? I called it Peyton. Oh, you called it Peyton. This is my fault. I know I can't see it. You can see it on your phone? Yeah, it's not on yours because the replay is right here. Mm. Then, all right, let's put it on. Just tap it, hit uh, play, and then, right, now we'll put it in the viewer. Okay. Think about X, like really the Y, and the Z. 
Right. Right. So now you've got to visualize. Right. Yep, it's in my hair's mind. Yeah, it'll play. Oh, wow. Wow. Like I said, I can upload it. You remember that? So you'll be able to log in. So I, I can send you that link, and since it's in your class, you can see it. So you're going to just put that link in Blackboard? Okay. Done? Yeah. I don't know how to put it in Blackboard. We're going to get a link. Wait, no, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I help Stan? Because she's creating something. As you walk by, oh, it's too great. I don't know. Finish your homework. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have one grade. Again? Oh, that's really cool. But I've heard everything cool. in except for, I think, maybe my little one. Well, you won't be without grades for very long, so I've got nothing to do tomorrow when I get in here except grade. And also, did you take the sample Google sample? What I did with that is I, I'll go back in and just give everybody 100. That way it'll, it'll count full. Okay. Now I'm just going to have one
So, so my argument <laughs> is, why would I spend all that money? And what's a kid going to get out of putting the thing on? Right? I would much rather teach <clears> him <throat> this or her this, and, and then you have this kind of thing happening, yeah. right? Yeah. And then when they put it on, they own it.
If we were to edit it, will you see the edited version? Yep. Okay. Because I am quick It's all live. Now, let me ask you this. Okay. So we, we saw just between the three of us back here, Savannah, Cheryl, and Savannah, how to do it. Yeah. Could you see this being done with more than one kid on a, on a thing? Uh -huh. In other words, I'd put the two of you together. On the same laptop? Yeah. I feel like that would maybe create problems, though, if one person was trying to do something and the other person was trying to do something. When I tried to do it this summer with my middle school guys and gals, I remember these are all. Like I said, really sharp, sharp kids who just can't fit in the middle school. Um, they didn't want to share. They didn't do their own thing. I, I kind of get that. But also, I kind of get okay, if, if I had a classroom where everybody had a Chromebook, and if I called up Steve and said, hey, can I have access to your account? And I said, sure. But please don't put everybody in. Just put in, I don't know, 15. That way you have two kids on a phone book working together. But if you had, okay, so if I had seats 1 through 15, but I put Ashley and Savannah on to one, Ashley and Savannah's kids are free to their own spaces. Although they're logging in as two to one. Yeah, so it could be done. Yeah, it's one of those things where I just, it takes me about 10 minutes to get people to see it and leave them alone. If you want to take the handout with you, you're more than welcome to it. If you want to leave it with me, I'll just add it to the stack that's over in the office. Except your all are nice and clean. I should have brought them over just so you can see it. Get it to work. Let me know. Okay. I want to. I want to see it. That looked like a really cool idea. Yeah. Like coming in and out. Yep. And then the next step would be figuring out how to do the collision thing, where you stick.